Hello everyone, this is Blaine from the TAC IPS Media Series, and I wanted to take a second today to talk to you about all of the software that's available for the IPS platform. I thought the easiest way we could do that is to show you cisco.com and navigate over to the download section and then show you all the files that we find. So let's go ahead and log into cisco.com. I love cats. Okay, so the easiest way that I found to get to the entire download section is to go to the support drop down and then click on download software. Okay, so here we're presented with a list of recently used products, but I'm going to start fresh. I'm going to go to the product selection and I'm going to go to security and then I'm going to go to intrusion prevention system. And for this exercise, I'm going to pretend that I have a 4260 appliance and we'll look at the software that's available for that appliance. So I'll click on IPS Appliances, I'll go to the 4200 series sensor, and I'll click on 4260. Okay, so here we have quite a few different selections for the software for the 4260. The first one is IME, which is our management center, uh, so a management software, and that can support up to 10 devices, and you can do a configuration and also reporting through it. We also have IDS uh, signature updates, and IDS, as we all know, is the old way of doing IPS. It stands for Intrusion Detection System. So we're going to start with the current software, which is IPS, Intrusion Prevention System. So let's start off by looking at the recovery software. Okay, so I'm going to click on the most recent recovery software, which is uh, for application uh, partition version 704E4. And here's the file name. So let's kind of break this down and talk about what we see here. So the first is just a designator for the IPS and the cryptographic designation. The second part here is uh, where it starts to get interesting, and that is the R and the version 1.1. So what does that really mean? Well, R stands for recovery, and 1.1 says if we install this file on the IPS, we're going to be upgrading the recovery partition to version 1.1. So maybe we should take a, back, a step back and talk about the differences between the recovery partition and the application partition. So most all of you are going to be familiar with the application partition. It's what you see when you log into the device via an admin account. And you log in and you can do a show ver, you can configure your virtual sensors, you can do all that stuff inside of the admin CLI. The recovery partition is the second partition that lives on every IPS, and it's only used for recovering the device. It's not used for interoperating with other devices or configuration or anything like that. It's only used for recovery. So we have the recovery partition version 1.1, and then we have an A 7.0.4E4. What that means is the A stands for the application partition, and 704E4 is what version you'll, you'll be running if you actually recover from the recovery partition after you've installed this recovery update. So let's take a step back out of the recovery software and click on the next link, and that is IPS Signature Updates. Okay, so we're on the latest one here, uh, S561, and here's the file name. We've got our IPS again. We've got SIG, uh, short for signature, and that just tells us that this is a signature update. And then we have S561, so that's a signature update level, uh, signature update 561. And then we have REQ, and that is short for requires. And it, what this means is that this particular signature update requires engine update E4. Okay, so let's expand E3 here and take a look at S479. See how the E changed? So it's no longer E4, but it's E3. That means that if you're going to install this signature update, your it is required that your appliance has engine update E3 installed. So also note the uh, file extension there. It's, it's important to get familiar with the file extensions for the IPS software. Uh, signature updates have extension PKG. Okay, so let's take a step back and look at the next item. So we have uh, system software here. Now this is uh, where it gets a little bit interesting. We talked about the recovery partition earlier and the upgrades that you can do to that. The system image files ending with .img start the system from scratch. So it completely blows away both partitions, it upgrades both partitions or 
downgrades for that matter, both, both partitions, and installs whatever version is designated by the file name. So right here we're on 623. Let's bounce over to 704E4, our latest version. And you'll see the .img file. And you can see that while the signature updates don't actually include a hardware designation, this one does. It says it's specifically for 4260. So the signature updates can be applied to any piece of hardware. They're, they're not specific to uh, a 4200 series or, um, uh, let's say, an SSC5 or an AIP SSM that goes inside of the ASA. They can be applied to any platform. So on the contrary, this particular file, the .img system image file, is specific to 4260. And it says that this is a system image file. It will recover your uh, recovery partition to version 1.1, and it will recover your application partition to 704E4. So let's bounce back to the file list here and look at the last one here. So this is system upgrades. So we're back to our PKG extension, and note that we do not designate a particular piece of hardware here, but we do have a note down here. And this says that you can apply this file to all supported platforms except for the AIM IPS and the NME IPS. Those two modules go inside of routers. So they're hardware modules, but they go inside of routers. And this particular update cannot be applied to the AIM and NME. AIM and NME have their own specific download section on CCO. So this is for version 623. Let's bounce to 704. And you can see that this is the upgrade file for 704E4, and it ends in PKG. So if you were on 703, for instance, you could update to 704 by using the upgrade IPS command and pointing the IPS to this file. So that's all the files that we have available, and I hope this uh, clears things up a bit. We do get a few cases sometimes where sometimes people are trying to um, upgrade their systems with um, the system image file, the .img file, and instead they want to be using the PKG file to do the upgrade or vice versa. So I hope this clears up any confusion and I hope you have a great day.